Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and in this series we're discovering the lore, backstory and characters of Overwatch's heroes, including more detail through their in-game voice lines and interactions. From comics to animated shorts, in-game interactions, website shares, convention panels and much more, Overwatch's lore is in lots of different places, so get it rounded up for all of your favourite heroes right here. In this video we're looking at Trace's story and origins with her interactions with fellow heroes and the world around her. Everyone's favourite cheeky cockney, fearless pilot, time jumping adventurer and more besides, Lena Oxton has had a whirlwind of a life so far, and off the back of a few potentially quiet years after the downfall of Overwatch, following Winston's recall of agents, she's now travelling with him and righting some wrongs as Talon rear their ugly head in the world once more. Traces complete lore, interactions and voice lines incoming, time codes in the description if you want to skip around. Time is on my side. <laughs> Firstly, we'll run through Tracer's lore and origins. From our present day until about the mid-2040s in the Overwatch timeline, humanity leapt forward in terms of scientific breakthroughs and technological understanding. Medical fields such as targeted therapy and biotech technologies, space science, climate science and more, but perhaps none as much as the field of robotic manufacturing and artificial intelligence. Out of a host of competing companies, one company, Omnica Corporation, appeared to have found the secret to a new economic golden age for the world promising huge economic benefits to any area that installed their Omniums, massive factories of automated construction combined with self-improving software AI. The company rapidly expanded across the globe. However, the promise was too good to be true. After independent analysis showing that these factories would never come close to meeting the lofty goals they had aimed for, Omnic was investigated, fraud was uncovered, and the company and its factories were shut down. It was a huge surprise to the world when these defunct Omniums woke up and started producing military robots to launch a campaign against all of humanity. Many countries fought hard in different ways, the Russians with their Volskaya industry, Sviatogor mechs, the Americans with their soldier enhancement program, but ultimately no country succeeded in destroying a single Omnium, that is until the Overwatch strike team was created. Compromised of six members, Morrison, Reyes, Amari, Wilhelm, Liao and Lindholm, this small task force under the United Nations struck blows against the Omnic control centres and brought an end to the crisis worldwide although it took some time. As the world began to enter nearly two decades of world peace under the auspices of Overwatch, the organisation grew and expanded, and its members were looked up to as heroes by people all around the world. Children who were born in the years at just the end of or following the first Omnic crisis were known as the Overwatch generation. And as someone born in this period, it's where Lena Oxton enters our story. Like many Overwatch heroes, we know little of Lena's early years, but she was certainly a very talented pilot at a very young age, and perhaps was involved with the RAF or British military. Particularly fearless in the air and her flying style, she was hand-picked as part of Overwatch's experimental flight program as the youngest ever recruit. However, an accident was about to change her world and life forever. On the first test flight of a teleporting prototype fighter known as the Slipstream, disaster struck. The teleportation technology malfunctioned, and as the aircraft disappeared, Lena was presumed dead. It was to everyone's surprise when she reappeared months later, but her ordeal had greatly changed her. Her molecules had been ripped out of the flow of time itself. Virtually a living ghost detached from time itself, she could disappear for hours and up to days at a time, in a condition that was dubbed coronal disassociation. Lena's condition seemed hopeless. Unable to maintain a physical form, she stumped Overwatch's doctors and scientists who tried to find a cure until Winston managed to find a solution. Designing a device known as the Chronal Accelerator, Winston made sure that Tracer could be anchored in the present, and it also gave Tracer some new abilities too. Being able to control her own time itself, speeding it up and slowing it down at will, Tracer very rapidly, as she trained and learned to use this skill, became one of Overwatch's most effective agents. By the time of Overwatch's uprising event, a 19-year-old Tracer was thoroughly in training, sparring with Blackwatch members such as Genji under the watchful eye of Winston and Mercy, Dr. Angela Ziegler. At this stage, seven years ago from Overwatch's present day in the story, it's worth noting that there were still a few issues with the Chronal Accelerator to work out. Winston mentions a few reliability issues as Strike Commander Morrison questions him. As Lena put in a request to be promoted to active duty, all was not well for Overwatch as an organisation. It was still recovering from the Venice incident, in which a Blackwatch operation had been made public in the events of Overwatch Retribution, and with public opinion swinging against the once lauded organisation, Overwatch was finding it increasingly difficult to operate. As Lena was training, the King's Row Uprising had entered its 27th day, 
Kings Row in London had been occupied by Null Sector, a dangerous organisation ostensibly fighting for Omnic rights, Null Sector had brought destruction and suffering to London, taking both Omnic and human hostages alike in the process, with Overwatch powerless to intervene, as the British Prime Minister specifically didn't give them permission to get involved. With Morrison unwilling to commit Overwatch forces without specific approval from a local government, Lena reminds him that he still has the ability to make a difference, and that people are counting on them. Deciding to delay a call from Director Petrus, Morrison dispatches a strike team of Mercy, Reinhardt, Torbjorn, and Tracer on her very first mission, where she actually gets her catchphrase in something that Torbjorn says when she arrives on the scene. So now you know where Tracer's iconic line comes from, a grumpy Torbjorn saying upon spotting the rookie recruit. Overwatch's deployment into King's Row was ultimately going to be successful. The strike team of four would be able to disarm the anti-aircraft guns, take Torbjorn's makeshift payload bomb to the power plant, destroy the doors, and actually be successful in eradicating the Null Sector presence there. However, we don't know the aftermath of the mission. With Overwatch deploying into a country without permission from its government yet again, more governments and figures would call for Overwatch's powers to be put in check. Overwatch as an organisation wasn't to last much longer after Tracer's first mission, but she still had some successes in her short field career. Stationed out of Watchpoint Gibraltar for a spell, Tracer was part of a strike team involving Genji and Winston that managed to bring Akande Ogundimu, or Doomfist, to justice. This mission wasn't without its problems. Doomfist showed his capabilities as a very clever and tactical fighter, ripping Tracer's chronal accelerator off and presumably getting her chronally disassociated for a short period of time before Winston could bring her back. Just one year after the events of Uprising, about six years before the present day in the Overwatch timeline, Overwatch as an organisation would fall to its knees and be disbanded. The destruction of its Swiss HQ, purportedly as a result of a confrontation between Rares and Morrison, would lead to public calls for the organisation to be disbanded, and any Overwatch activity to be made illegal under the Petrus Act. Still only just 20, we now don't know what Trace has been up to for the last six or seven or so years until we come to the present day of Overwatch with Winston's recall. With law and order seemingly breaking down in places around the world, anti-omnic sentiment on the rise, and Talon still roaming unchecked across international boundaries. After Reaper's attack on Watchpoint Gibraltar in order to try and obtain Overwatch agent information, Winston attempted to recall Overwatch agents, even though activity was still illegal, and Tracer was the first to reply. Winston? Is that you, love? Oh, it's been too long! Yes. <laughs> yes, it has. Tracer would be swinging into action, and against Talon nonetheless, a lot earlier than she actually thought. In the events of Alive, which could take place mere hours after Winston sends a recall message, in one local language dub of recall, there is actually a line saying that Mondata will speak tonight in London. That very same night, Tracer was in King's Row to hear a speech by Takata Mondata, the leader of the Shambhali monks, and an advocate for omnic rights and coexistence with humanity. From her voice lines, we know that Tracer found Mandata to be very inspirational. And as something didn't seem quite right to her in the setup of the event, she leapt into action to try and protect the Omnic Monk. In a furious rooftop duel against Widowmaker, who Talon had seemingly dropped into London without any problems, Tracer nearly managed to bring the sniper to rights, but in an attempt to save her own life as she was falling through the air, was unable to protect Mandata from a lethal round from the Widow's Kiss. Having linked up with Winston again, Tracer's next move was a vigilante one, as her and Winston headed to a museum to foil an attempted robbery by Talon, with Reaper and Widowmaker attempting to reclaim Doomfist's gauntlet. Although the duo were successful in thwarting Talon on this occasion, the entire escapade was captured on surveillance footage, with the United Nations being forced to again deny that Overwatch activity had been sanctioned. The two were vigilantes. Through this unsanctioned operation, Tracer and Winston had revealed themselves as being agents in the world once more. While various governments were quick to issue official condemnations of what they saw as illegal activity, public opinion was very, very mixed on the subject. In a poll by Atlas News, three out of four people surveyed said they were uncertain as to what Overwatch's potential return could mean for the world. In the midst of all this vigilante action, we saw Tracer get a bit of a break at Christmas. As she dashed around King's Road to try and get a Christmas gift for her partner, she found herself beset on all sides by her desire to help people. Saving a family's Christmas presents from a thief, one of the presents she got just so happened to be a scarf that her wiser half, Emily, really, really liked. 
By this time, Winston's chronal acceleration technology had been improved to the extent where Tracer could not wear her chronal accelerator in certain specially prepared areas. We see this in her and Emily's flat, and also at the end in Watchpoint Gibraltar, when her and Emily actually finally make Winston's Christmas dinner. With Doomfist now out of prison and Talon's attempts to cause unrest around the world continuing, Tracer and Winston will need all the help they can get. With ex-Overwatch operatives such as May and Reinhardt answering the call, and Brigitte coming to help Reinhardt too, the heroes that the world could use more of are very much assembling. Seven years on, Lena still wants to make the same difference that she did when she was activated on her first mission for Overwatch. And whatever direction this merry band of misfits goes in next, well, I'm sure Tracer will be in the thick of it. Cheers, love! The cavalry's here! Okay, onto Tracer's voice lines, and voice actor Cara Theobald does an awesome job of getting across Tracer's cheeky and happy persona. When things are going well, she's happy to be the centre of attention. All eyes on me! And she's certainly very enthusiastic at expressing anything she does. <laughs> Last one, there's a rotten egg! If you're a friend, she'll joke about with you, and if you're an enemy, she'll joke about with you too, as proven if you kill Reaper multiple times, you can trigger this rare line. Death comes! And if you're using her punk skin, you might hear these very, very British pieces of mild language on occasion. Huh. Wanker. Tosser. And hopefully that doesn't cause this video to get demonetized. But if you like the channel and you want to support, do throw a subscribe. That always helps me out. Or check out patreon.com forward slash hammy to see how you can help me make more lore videos about all kinds of things in the future. While we're on the topic of rare voice lines and skin specific voice lines, Trace has a bunch of cool work for her jingle skin as well as a bunch of others. Here are a selection of some of my favourites. Cheers, love! The holidays are here! You were on the naughty list. That's some coal for your stocking. I think I heard some sleigh bells. <laughs> Dashing through the snow, here comes T-Racer. I'm in pole position. On your marks, get set, go. Phew, I think I hit the wall. We're almost to the finish line. Let's do this. Feeling that runner's high. Okay, now as always in my videos of this kind, it's time for a reference game where I pick a few of Tracer's voice lines and you gotta tell me the references that they might be referring to. Here's the first one. Great, Scott. I like to think that's Doc Brown from Back to the Future. And of course, an easy one for you. Keep calm and trace her on. Referring, of course, to keep calm and carry on. Now, you'll have seen the merchandise and variants of it everywhere, but it was a motivational poster from the British government just before the Second World War, trying to keep the British public's morale up ahead of what was going to be a terrible conflict. Being lost in time was really scary. Sometimes I'd have these strange dreams about the olden days. Like I was a kitchen maid in this grand house in the country. Now, Tracer's voice actor Cara Theobald was actually in the series Downton Abbey as a maid nonetheless. So there you go, a little bit of self-referential and deferential humour there. And here's another little teaser of one of the cool hot lines that Tracer has. My friend Winston made this accelerator for me. I'm still not sure about all the things it does though, like this switch. Whoa! <laughs> Okay, I won't do that again. And one last reference for you meme economists out there. Someone set up you! <laughs> the bomb! That's of course from classic gif, all your base are belong to us, the slightly broken English in the opening cutscene of a Mega Drive port of Zero Wing. A vintage meme now indeed, considering it was from 2000 or so that it first kicked off. Just a quick nod to some of Trace's other awesome voice work. We see her sort of semi-naivety kind of nervousness and things in her first mission when we hear her voice work with Reinhardt, Torbjorn and Mercy in the Uprising event. I've done an entirely separate video on that if you want to check, that's also linked in the description. As for Retribution or Heroes Mode, Trace does have some fun lines and I picked out these particular ones when she kills the Sniper and when she sees the heavy Assault Trooper get knocked over. Oh, I hate Snipers. He fell over! He fell over! Trace is still clearly smarting at her confrontations with Widowmaker, and the he fell over is kind of a British sports thing that crowds will cheer if someone slips on a football pitch, and occasionally if you see someone slip on a night out. Okay, time for interactions. Now, before every match starts, Overwatch heroes chatter with and banter with each other in a series of in-game voice interactions that can give little hints and nods to their character and their in-game lore. As the poster person of Overwatch, Trace has a lot of interactions with the cast, many she's probably not met in the actual lore, but as an ex-Overwatch agent who has and is currently fighting Talon, she's had a good chance to run into a lot of people in the Overwatch world. And the first person that Tracer interacts with is of course Tracer. Now chronal disassociation I'm sure could cause a couple of Tracers to turn up in the similar or different timelines, and if you play No Limits you might hear one Tracer say this to another on the same team. Whoa, it's me! Is my chronal accelerator malfunctioning again? Wait. 
That's what I was just thinking. Spooky. No, I know how that feels. This is something else entirely. Tracer and Junkrat probably haven't met in the actual lore, but Tracer is a prime target for Junkrat's quips and bad puns. Even her trademark catchphrase isn't safe. Cheers, mate. The cavalry's here. That's my line. And although Junkrat is interested in Tracer's pulse bomb, it doesn't seem as though he's going to get a look at how it works. Think I could have a look at one of those bombs of yours? Over my dead body. Now, Lucio and Tracer are both cheery personalities with a bit of a love for speed, so it's no surprise that the two like having a little bit of a race. They also have a special Winter Wonderland interaction where Lucio invites Tracer and her partner Emily to go skiing. Lucio, I'll race ya! Oh, you're on. Can't keep up? Then stay out of our way. Hey, Tracer, you and Emily want to hit the slope sometime? Absolutely. If you think you can keep up with us. May and Tracer have a few lines. May may have run into Tracer before she went into cryostasis after the accident at Eco Point Antarctica. May looks up to Tracer as a hero and Tracer has some kind words for her and they have a little chat on sartorial choices. Tracer, you're so amazing. You inspire me. May, you're the real hero. Aren't you warm wearing all that? Yes, but it's too late to change. Ever since she was young, Farah has always longed to be a member of Overwatch, but she never managed to get her chance before the organisation was disbanded. So, her and Tracer have a chat about what that could mean. You're so lucky, Tracer. Ever since I was a little girl, I dreamed of joining Overwatch. Maybe you'll still get your chance. Who knows what the future holds? As for Soldier 76, will he offer some old man wisdom, but Tracer isn't having any of it. You need to slow down. Think about your actions. Okay, Dad. Now, Sombra and Tracer won't see eye to eye for various reasons. On top of the obvious, Sombra's translocator tech is actually stolen somehow from Winston's tech and from Overwatch. So Sombra with her master hacking has managed to get something pretty valuable there. And the two don't get on as a result. Don't think I don't recognise that device of yours. I know you stole it. What can I say? A girl just has to have the latest... Sometimes I feel a little sick after using my translocator. I'm sure you know what I mean, Tracer. Won't be a problem if you just disappear forever. Ah, Widowmaker. Tracer's nemesis, it seems. The two have been facing off in various places in the museum, in King's Row, and I'm sure they'll be facing off in Overwatch animated shorts and stories to come. Suffice to say, the two do not get on when they chat with each other before a match. What you looking at? An annoyance. Tiens, tiens. It looks like we will be working together. Don't think I'm happy about that. <laughs> so predictable. Even when you reverse time, you always make the same decisions. Don't be so sure about that. Winston and Tracer, firm friends, Christmas meal companions and partners in crime. Well, it is crime now as they're working as vigilantes, as I've watched technically is not allowed right now. Winston offers Tracer a bit of tech support and the two trade a few jokes, of course, before our game starts. Need any adjustments to your chronal accelerator? I think... <laughs> Just kidding, Winston. It works great. Oh, Winston! <laughs> Got your favourite. For the last time, no more bananas. Last but not least, Zenyata. Now Tracer found Takata Mondata, Zenyata's previous leader of the Shambhali monk organisation that he is a part of, an inspiration to her. And that's part of the reason why she went to such efforts to save him in the events of Alive. So, when Tracer runs into Zenyata, they discuss the fate of the Omnix. Wow. It's an honour to meet a member of the Shambhali. Mondata was an inspiration to me. To us all. I miss him greatly. Finally, map interactions. Now, Tracer is pretty well travelled in the world of Overwatch through her activities with the organisation, so she's got a bunch to say on several different maps. King's Row, well, Tracer fought here in Uprising. She lives near here with Emily, so it's a place of big significance to her, kind of her hometown. And she talks about going out various places and other things in her interactions. Back in my old stomping ground. I could murder a chippy. Shall we nip to the pub? Pub anyone? I could murder a chip Sarney. Wonder if I have time to visit Emily? No. Better stay focused. As an ex-Overwatch base where Winston is currently hiding out, Tracer has memories of Watchpoint Gibraltar, but slightly more practical ones. Has she left any stuff behind? I wonder if I left anything in my locker here. Every hero, of course, has a line on Horizon Lunar Colony. Do check out my specific video for that in my voice lines playlist if you're interested. Here's Tracer's one. Wow. I think I understand what Winston felt like now. 
Looking back at the earth from here. Last but not least, Tracer loves a bit of a bad pun as much as Junkrat, maybe as much as Michael Chu, the lead writer of Overwatch. So this I think was meant to be on Ilios. Now, Yeros is a Greek dish, kind of a pita bread served with a selection of meats off a rotisserie, and depending on what you want. The world could always use more Yeros. Thanks for tuning in. If you want to see more like this, check out the playlists here. Like, subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. That really helps me out. And big thanks to my patrons on Patreon who make these longer videos possible. Check out patreon.com forward slash hammy to see if you like this kind of thing, how you could support the channel and help me make more of this for you and do other games as well, perhaps. Cheers for tuning in. I've been Hammy. Take it easy.